All right, so welcome to Eat, Move, Think, the show about optimal wellness brought to you by MyCan. Wow. Oh, I was practicing. Oh. <laughs> okay, ready? <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome to Eat, Move, Think, think. the show about optimal, optimal, optimal wellness brought, brought to you, you by MyCan. Yeah, that, this is extremely good. Thank you. The thing that changed your wellness. By the thing, we mean like... Is it a book? Is it a show? Is it a movie? Is, is it, it a, a well, is it a TikTok feed? Is it a podcast? Somebody who like had you, you thought about things one way and then after you thought about things a different way. Yeah. And that could really come from anywhere. And I think yeah. that's really cool. The thing that changed my wellness, for example, is a podcast episode featuring Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's a neuroscientist and he goes over his whole morning routine and it's changed the way I do my morning routine. When it comes to caffeine, going outside, drinking water, I'm doing these things differently after listening to that. So that's mine. Okay, so links. Every we'll single links thing for everything that we talk this. about in this podcast, do not worry. It will be directly linked in our show notes. So make sure to check those out for all these interesting resources that we're going to be telling you about. The thing that changed my wellness is Younger Next Year. That's a book. That totally changed how I think about aging and empowered me to think about, well, if I work out and if I watch what I eat, I can actually get better and stronger and more fit over time rather than less. I'm Jasmine Ratch. I'm Chris Shulgin. We're the producers of Eat, Move, Think. And in this episode... We have MedCan experts, MedCan staff, giving you inspiration for your next beach read or the next podcast episode you'll listen to after this one, of course. You're probably listening to this in summertime. You're probably, maybe you're on the way somewhere or you're running or you're doing some sort of exercise. And this is designed to provide people with options to consider as they're thinking about their wellness and taking maybe some time off and here are some things to consider. Things that have up. changed MedCan people's lives, really, yeah. in one way or another. Empowered. Tried and true. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll hand it off to them. We'll be listing off everyone as we go, but we're starting with the first one here. Here's Nova Von Burnett. She's a clinic concierge at MedCan. We'll let her tell you what changed her wellness. The book is called The Obesity Code, and it's by Dr. Fung. So she means Dr. James Fung. He's a hepatologist as well as the author of this book. He candidly explained the hormone insulin as a direct correlation between weight loss and weight gain. And it didn't just lay out the terms of how insulin works. It also went into the various foods that were insulin friendly. So up those nuts, you know, don't eliminate the carb, just reduce the amount of carbs and don't marry them with other complicated Proteins. I'm sure it's things that have been regurgitated before, but the way he outlines this book, it's beautiful, more informative. Yeah. It's changed the pattern in which I eat. Used to be a late night snacker. Now I'm not. It's not that chips are a bad thing. I said chips are a bad thing every week. <laughs> <laughs> and upping your fruit and vegetables, especially vegetables that are high in chlorophyll and iron and B, vitamin Bs, any fish with omegas, those have been the things that have enriched my diet and have really caused me to rethink the way I embrace nutrition. Not go on a diet, but be nutritious in the way I pick my foods. I love that line. Not, Not go, go on, on a, a diet. diet. But be, be nutritious. nutritious. Yeah. That's like, it's a way to live your life instead of just eating on a diet. You want to know my favorite line? Yeah. Up those nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I could have guessed that. Uh, but it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm a big consumer of almonds. I think almonds are wonderful. Nuts like, are literally amazing. an important part of a balanced diet. It's been helpful, especially when we're in this scenario where, like for today, I'm doing flow management. We do a lot of sitting, but we need our brains healthy. And that's the other thing he says in the book, to feed your brain as well. You know, insulin is a hormone and it does start to regulate the way the body manufactures, breaks down and deals with sugar. So it thinks everything has sugar. So if you invite too much sugar into your diet, you throw off the balance of your system. So I'm in a person that's in a sedentary role like mine, do I want to sit here and just consume sugar all the time? So it is supposed to be a healthy balance of water, foods, fibers, and it goes a, a long way with what the book suggests in portions and the types of food that you're supposed to be eating. Okay, there's this tuna. I copied it from here. It was a tuna niçoise. So it's um, russet potatoes, 
green beans, tuna, mustard, pepper, an assortment of greens, microgreens, and a very light vinaigrette with apple cider. And it's so good. And I love tomatoes and nightshades, even though you're not supposed to be eating those things as a arthritic person. But I found that the change in my diet has actually helped my joints. Like I can sit longer. I can walk longer. I can, I feel more energetic, less lethargic. So it's been really helpful in that I've stabilized my weight. I still have 40 more pounds to go, but it feels like half the effort because I have the knowledge. Oh man, that's great. Boy, that's inspiring. Good for her. Yeah. And, and just thinking about being sedentary, so not consuming that sugar. Man, she's impressive. I mean, we have similar jobs to that. You know, we're sitting a lot as well. These are things that a lot of people have to think about these days and the yeah. way we live our lives. Absolutely. Next up, we have Robin Wilson. She's a senior campaign manager at MedCan. She's got the one application on the list. So it's an interesting one. Amazing. Let's do it. Recently, I had heard about this app called Yuka, which is essentially a food and cosmetic scanner uh, for products that you want to kind of get more insight on certain ingredients. So for instance, sodium, sugar, um, any kind of preservatives or anything that kind of you want to monitor in your intake. There's different grading scales uh, from poor to good to excellent to completely do not ingest it. It's quite vast in what you can scan. You just scan the barcode and it pops up in the app. I've never come across a product that hasn't scanned yet, so that's pretty good. And then it just kind of brings up the ingredient and nutritional information, whether it's shampoo or a bag of chips or anything. So, And then everything saves in your history, right? So you can kind of back and go back to it and remind yourself of what uh, it looks like from a health perspective. But uh, it's proven to be pretty helpful in that, you know, if I'm looking for something like an alternative to kind of better my everyday, like for instance, I eat crackers quite a bit. But if I'm going to kind of look for a healthier alternative, this has been a great app to um, direct me in doing so. And, you know, it's very well designed and laid out. So it's very digestible as far as how it works, how user friendly it is. And it's kind of fun just doing it, you know, and then having that history ready to pop up and then just using it for the next time you go grocery shopping. My uh, one friend who did turn me on to it, you know, she uses it quite a bit. Her mother lives by it. And there's different versions, which I haven't got into, but I'm still assessing out the free version and it's fantastic. So basically what you do, you use the app and you scan the actual UPC code and then it tells you health information about that particular product. Okay, so we have here a box of granola. I eat this granola like on a regular basis. So we're going to scan it and see what we find. So when you say scan, you've just pointed your phone at the UPC code yep. on the bottom of the what is essentially a cereal box. Yep. Okay. Just scanned it. It popped right up. It's got a 35 out of 100 rating. It's too fatty. It's a bit too caloric, a bit too sweet. But it also says it's an excellent amount of protein. It gives me recommendations for better, similar options. Oh my gosh, this app. I am getting this app. Robin, thank you for this. This is an amazing one. I'm going to use this I've when I'm never at the grocery heard, store. Yeah, I've never heard of this. And yeah. it's totally going to revolutionize my life. I'm really excited. Okay, next up, we have Lauren Kachera. She works at the front desk at MedCan, so she checks you in when you're coming for your appointments. She's talking about a book that she's reading. Okay, Basically, cool. I've been reading this book called Super Life by Darren Olian, and one of the tips in it um, talks about water intake and specifically how much you should be drinking each day for your body weight. I guess it also encouraged me to get a water bottle, and it has the times on it, so it reminds you kind of when to drink kind of goes along with uh, the show he has with Zac Efron on Netflix. So I think it talks about superfoods and like just healthy life tips. That show that Lauren's talking about is called Down to Earth. It's on Netflix. Uh, this is Zac Efron from the Baywatch movie. Oh, you mean High School Musical? Because that's what I know him from. But wait, so he has a show... This is a new thing for me. We are traveling around the world to find some new perspectives on some very old problems. We need to start rethinking how we consume everything from our food to our power. It's time to get down to earth. It's a really interesting show and it's all about sustainability and they travel around the world and meet people making change in the environment. So it's a great one. We'll link that in the show notes. And as well. the thing that Lauren liked most about Darren Olean's book was his formula for healthy water intake. Yes, there was a formula based on your body weight. I think my intake came out to be like 1.6 liters, I believe. 
I usually would drink water, just not enough of it. I think it's important to think about what you need personally, because not everyone, I don't think it's healthy for everyone to have a gallon of water. So that's an interesting point. I did check out what the formula is in this book. So if you want to learn how much water you should be drinking for your body weight, listen to this. Increase your water consumption to a minimum of half your body weight in fluid ounces. So this is the example. If you weigh 140 pounds, that would be about 70 ounces, which is a little more than half a gallon. Half your body weight in pounds, not kilograms. Yes, in pounds. And then that is equivalent to half of that is in ounces. Okay. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should have 100 ounces per day. According to this book, Super Life. I think it's nice that you can actually personalize the intake of water that you're drinking. I think there's this blanket statement of how much we should be consuming. And Lauren, who is quite petite, (laughs) was probably happy to hear that she didn't need to be drinking as much as someone who weighs 200 pounds. Yes, absolutely. Next up, we have our MOVE host. He's also the clinical director of sports medicine, therapy, rehabilitation, and fitness at MedCan. And he has some fun pop culture references that have inspired his wellness. Go My whole Andy. life has been around wellness and activity and fitness, starting as a youth with sports, progressing through university, playing football. But, you know, I think things that changed or engaged me, some pop culture points. Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, and when he came out with Pumping Iron, and I know a lot of people would say the same thing. You're known for being one of the most intense individuals in the gym. Because I was so enthusiastic about achieving my vision and winning one championship after the next. So when I went into the gym, I put my gym bag down and I immediately attacked the weights. Boom, boom, all the way to the top until you just can't do it. You know, it kind of brought bodybuilding into the mainstream spectrum and realized that, hey, you know, I, I can make myself stronger and maybe make myself look a little better at the same time. And it also made me better at sports as I started to get into exercise, particularly resistance training was my thing. Some people do exercise consistently their whole time, right? They never take a break. They do the same thing all the time. I, like most people, am not like that. I have times when I fall off the wagon, so to speak. And, I, and you know, the last couple of years, I've been less compliant to my hopes and dreams around exercise regularly. So I haven't worked out. I didn't have access to a gym other than the MedCan gym for the last year. And so I recently got my membership back. And why did I do that? I started to realize that I'm, I'm just not where I want to be. I still do sports. I play touch football. And I started realizing that I'm, I'm not my old self. I'm starting to lose a step. When I'm covering the 20-somethings, you know, they're, they're making me look slower than I need to be. So I realized that I need to get back in and exercise to make myself do the things I want to do to enjoy my life and, and ultimately make myself healthier long term so that I live longer healthy. Another thing that sort of made me engage in fitness, I was watching the movie Rocky Balboa. The greatest underdog story of our time is back for one final round. Rocky Balboa. It's over. You can tell it's over until it's over. Where's that from? The 80s? It's probably in the 70s. Now, some of you have seen this, and I'm not noting it for an Oscar or anything like that, but what it was about it is here's a guy in his 50s, remembers his old life, and wants to get back in. And it's not about trying to reclaim his youth. It's trying to do the things he loves to do and try to do it for long term. And achieving personal goals. And that's kind of what I took away from it. And so that's what I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at what are my goals for the future and how can I achieve them? And I need to get into eating better, exercising regularly so that I can enjoy my time to play, continue to play sports into my 60s and 70s. Like that's my goal is to never stop playing sports. We've been talking a lot about Arnie lately. I think that's a good thing, though. Did you know he's 80% vegan? 80% vegan. This so... is his own his own proclamation. So he is 80% <laughs> vegan. He definitely has to eat. You know, he's got to get the gains. He likes to have soup for dinner. He likes a light dinner. His breakfast is Greek yogurt a lot of the time. I also like the idea of being inspired by something you see in a movie. Like Ro- Rocky Balboa, you know, Sylvester Stallone is super inspiring in that movie. And just, you know, he is an older person and he is not letting that affect what he does or his activities in that movie. It's great. Next up, we have MedCan's Mind Station team lead, and she's a social worker as well. Jennifer Baldashin is telling us about a book that she really liked that helps her stay fit. I love the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. His idea is that you have to take away any ambiguity when you want to do something difficult because your brain's going to talk you out of it. I love exercising, but the first thought is, gee, that's hard. You're tired. You don't want to do this. But in Atomic Habits, he says, if you can take away any ambiguity around your decision making, it makes it a lot easier and it's more likely it's going to happen. 
So for me, I'd love to exercise, but how am I going to get that in? So I look at the calendar and again, I take away all the ambiguity. You have to think about what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how long you're going to do it for, why you're going to do this. And then you set yourself up to succeed. It's kind of like having coffee with a friend. So if you say to your friend, let's have coffee sometime, it's not going to happen because your friend's going to say, oh, I'd love to. And then it just kind of peters out. But if you say very clearly, let's meet on Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we'll meet by Starbucks and go for a half an hour walk. Then you can visualize it in your mind. You're going to write it in the calendar. And then the day before, you're going to start looking forward to it. So it's the same thing with exercise. You have to write it down in the calendar and you have to visualize exactly what you're going to do. And then it doesn't seem as daunting. So one of the strategies he says in the book is to make things that are very obvious. So you may want to put your clothes out ahead of time. So as soon as you walk home, you know, you get home, you see your exercise clothes, you're going to get into them. You don't have to think about, oh, what am I going to wear? And, you know, what should I do? And, and oh, okay, forget about it. I'll think about it tomorrow. So anytime you can take away any decisions or too much thinking, it's more likely it's going to happen. And then you tell people it's a non-issue now. Every Friday after work, I go for a run. And it's just a fact. It's become part of my schedule. It's part of my routine. And I run with a, a colleague here at MedCan. And we do text each other you know, throughout the week saying, okay, don't forget Friday, we're going to do how far are we going to go? What are we going to do? And we kind of plan it. But I do have a calendar. I work with a, a running coach now. And she tells me exactly what I should do, how far I should go. And so again, it takes my thinking out. So I just know it's, it's like a, having a meeting in a calendar. It's just going to get done. Atomic Habits and James Clear. It's a great book. James Clear is interesting too. And he also runs a newsletter, the 321 newsletter, which has oh. about 2 million subscribers wow. and is really great about wellness and, and uh, improving yourself on a daily basis. So look out for that as well. We have another episode that features really great tips on how to create new habits and implement change permanently. So if you're interested in that, go back to episode 150 with David Macklin. It's called How to Change and that is a good one. Cool. Next up, we have MedCan registered dietitian Netta Rizvani and she's got another podcast that you should probably add to your There's a podcast by Brene Brown called Unlocking Us um, and I've listened to it pretty regularly over the last few years. Um, that's definitely changed my viewpoint for mental health. Brene goes through different podcasts with specialists, so different psychologists and different psychiatrists on there, and she talks about resilience and courage and how to take care of yourself better generally. I think for myself, I find that I'm more courageous to speak my truth, even at work and with my my friends and my in my relationships. But with respect to MedCan, I think it reminds us that we are just human beings trying to get through life. So let's say someone grew up in an environment where someone was calling them overweight or commenting on their body image, and it really affected their relationship with food in that they don't like talking about food or they're restricting themselves or they're unhappy with food. Like food is something that we should be communal. It should be cultural. It should be about family. It should be about love and comfort and all those things. And so with what this podcast has really done is it's helped me have that conversation with them to talk about what is actually the root problem. It's helped me be a little more gentle in my practice too in having those conversations. And then it turns into discussing resiliency and forgiving themselves if they feel like they have eaten poorly, whatever that looks like to them, and reducing the binary thoughts like I'm either a good eater or I'm a bad eater, like all foods fit. And so that podcast really helped with describing resiliency and shaping their relationship with food. Brene Brown is another one of my favorites, too. I really love her stance on being authentic, showing up for yourself. That's a huge part of my self-care. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. She is a legend in the field, isn't she? Oh, my God. 100%. I think we should stitch in a clip here and just feel the impact that some of her single sentences can have. I feel like I belong everywhere I go, no, no matter where it is or who I'm with, as long as I never betray myself. And the minute I become who you want me to be in order to fit in and make sure people like me is the moment I no longer belong anywhere. And that is hard. I mean, that's a hard practice. That's an everyday practice. Blame. Next up, we have Dr. Nelson Ferreira. He's been a guest on this podcast before, and his choice is a classic book by John Kennedy. When I was asked this question about what piece of content may have affected my approach to wellness, I had to think about this very deeply. I had to reach back more than 25 years to remember a book that I read called Full K. 
Catastrophe Living by John Cabot Zinn. And I called my first book Full Catastrophe Living. It's the nature of the human condition to actually, uh, at times, un encounter uncertainty, sadness, and also tremendous potential for joy, connection, love. And all of that is the full catastrophe. It's not just the bad stuff. It's everything. And the question is, can we love it? Can we live inside of it in ways that actually uh, enliven us and allow us to be fully human? I would say. John Kabat-Zinn was a person who used meditation and mindfulness to treat patients with very serious illnesses such as cancer. One of the most important lessons of the book is the difference between pain and suffering. To a great degree, the quality of one's life experience is dependent upon the physical interface between your inner self and your outer self. It is critically important to understand how to manage your attention and to be able to give focus and energy to those things in your life that are most important and congruent with healthy living, such as nutrition, exercise, and a generally positive mental attitude. Meditation and mindfulness can be very helpful in developing the skill of anchoring your attention. Oh, it's so interesting. You know, the idea of where you're going to put your attention, John Kabat-Zinn, so this book was written 25 years ago. I wonder what he would say about TikTok, for example, or any of the stuff, you know, that just... You, you know, you find yourself scrolling and it then you wrote. look up and it's like 25 minutes later. Yeah. Yeah. Like so many things today, I think are, we've talked about this before, are designed to ruin our attention. Great suggestion. Thanks, Dr. Ferreira. Okay. Moving on next, we have genetic counselor, Justin Lorenz. He's got a big book that will be known to a lot of people that changed his world. The book that changed my opinion on wellness is Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. It's a bit of a doozy, and I read it through audiobooks while I was walking my dog. That's a good tip to tackle a chunky book like Sapiens. Audiobook, like chunk it up into small pieces. It's helpful, more accessible. Totally. Before I went to school for genetic counseling, I spent my undergraduate degree working in an evolutionary biology lab. There's a quote that our biology professors would say on the first day of, of our classes, and the quote acted as a bit of a rule book for helping to understand biological concepts and ask critical questions. And the quote is, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Evolutionary theory informs our understanding of genetics, of medicine, of diet, of wellness. And what we know about how the ancestors of early humans overcame pressures or adversities that they faced really gives us insight into what our bodies are built to do. In the book Sapiens, Yuval kind of gives a story about a Stone Age woman who comes across a fig tree. And the most sensible thing for her to do is to eat as many ripe figs as possible in that exact moment so that no other animal can do it. And so this may have helped select for this instinct to binge eat high calorie food. And so some of these kind of theories and processes can, can sometimes be forgiving some of these uh, behaviors that we have. Humans, like cars, weren't designed to sit around for long periods of time. For cars, if that happens, the battery can drain, tires can get flat spots. For humans, if we sit around, we get cardiovascular disease, we get diabetes, musculoskeletal issues, mental health issues. Sitting at chairs or on couches for most of the day is a very new part of the human story on Earth. And our bodies haven't evolved to accommodate this lack of environmental pressure. We're like little Ferraris that spend way too much time in parking lots and we're driving on roads with speed limits of like 30 kilometers per hour. So for me, learning how humans evolved informs my wellness choices. We should allow ourselves to get hot, to get cold. We should allow ourselves to feel satiated instead of feeling full. We should allow ourselves to stand and walk for extended periods of time every day. That's kind of where I stand in terms of uh, influence of books on how I approach my life. Oh my God, Justin is, that is so great. And it totally changed. I, you know, I read that book a couple of years ago. It totally changed the way I never thought of it from a wellness perspective. I always thought about it from a history perspective. And mm. uh, gosh, it is remarkable. If you think about human bodies as machines, I mean, we live like 80, 90 years. We want to live, you know, to be a hundred. Yeah. What other complex machine is that long lasting? I mean, 
evolution is a remarkable thing and it developed this wonderful thing that we can prolong with certain good decisions, with certain healthy choices, it's almost like that's our duty to. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. And you can hear Justin's passion in there yeah. in that clip. Like you can tell he's in the right career. Thanks, Justin. That's a, a fantastic suggestion. Yeah. Next up, we have Brent Lower. He's the product lead for Men's Health and Vitality at MedCan. Well, I follow this podcast by a gentleman named Peter Atia. And one podcast that really stuck out to me was uh, Sleep Hygiene. We know Peter Atia. We talk about him all the I've time. Got a young family, uh, three and five year old kids who don't necessarily sleep that well. So I was looking for an avenue to improve my sleep pattern, uh, sleep hygiene, and ran across this podcast, which has dramatically improved my sleep quality. Uh, it's more the routine and the re regime that you got to create on your own and keep it consistent. So, you know, go to bed at the same time at night every night, wake up the same time every morning, whether it's a weekend or weekday, limit technology or FaceTime for screen time at night. Obviously, I'm, for me, I don't drink too many fluids either because I don't want to wake up in the night. So I've been mindful of that. He mentioned that. Blackout blinds was a big one that I added to my room, which I didn't have, which has obviously given me a lot more darker sleep. So I'm not waking up just at the crack of dawn anymore. So those are the three pillars I would say were the biggest thing was go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, make sure you have some blackout blinds. Those are the three things that I would say were, were very important to me in improving my quality of sleep. I generally start my sort of bedtime routine a little earlier, uh, so that way I don't have that tendency to want to lean into a, a, an iPad or a, the television or, to, or even your phone. So yeah, just starting things a little earlier, so that way you're not jumping into bed last minute and starting your routine. So yeah, I'll start usually 30 minutes before my 10 o'clock bedtime, and just that way I've got at least 30 minutes of downtime before that. Uh, my wake up time is going to be 6, 6.30, so try to get into that eight hour window. It is broken at times with the kids, but generally that is the window that I look for uh, that fits my routine and my workday. If Brent Lohr can do that with a three-year-old and a five-year-old, we can all do that. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, yeah. And Peter Atia Outlive, his uh, best-selling book, which we've talked about, is one of those books. It's very dense and may better be consumed as an audiobook while dog walking, yeah. for, for example. Thanks, Brent. Next up, we have Sammy Rosenswag. She's a campaign specialist at MedCan. The wellness content that changed her life is? Brown noise. What? I have no <laughs> idea what this is. I've never heard of it. I'm interested in this Something one. that I like to do before bed just to wind down and kind of relax, um, which funny enough I found on TikTok, is this thing called brown noise. And apparently it's supposed to kind of clear your mind and put you in a state where it's easier for you to fall asleep. And I found that's helped for me. This is in contrast to white noise. So brown noise is a slightly different form of white noise. So it's very similar. White noise is a little higher and brown noise is a little lower, a little deeper sounding. Interesting. But it is a very similar concept. And it's just a really nice way to kind of get in a sleepier mood. So I typically actually access it through TikTok, funny enough. I tend to put it on on days where I feel a little bit more wired. Maybe it was a busy work day. Uh, maybe there's just a lot going on. And I'll turn that on just to kind to clear my mind a bit and put me in a more relaxed state, I find it also helps with that. So I typically just search it up in the search bar, search up brown noise and a few different options pop up and you could just click it and listen to it for a while and it kind of just eases the mind. You ready? Oh, so there's like a bass there. Yeah. The hashtag brown noise has over 125 million views on TikTok. So wow. Sammy's onto something. And there's no actual evidence, definitive research that brown noise can help people who have ADHD or help people to relax. But there's tons of anecdotal evidence. And there are a few studies that have suggested that um, white noise could improve cognitive function and concentration in people with ADHD. Hmm. And that's from an article in Washington Post. Cool. So that's our roundup of what has changed your wellness from MedCan staff and MedCan experts. And now we have one more content recommendation, which has to do with one very special podcast in particular. And it's from Eat, Move, Think videographer Andrew Imex. The one specific thing that changed my wellness was episode 112 all about intermittent fasting with Leslie Beck and Dr. Krista Verity. Oh, you mean 112 of Eat, Move, Think? Yes, 112 Whoa. of Eat, Move, Think, the podcast itself. It's such an important episode for me. It changed my life a lot, actually. Okay, so expand on that a little bit. What exactly is it about that episode that made such a difference for you? So when the pandemic hit, uh, it was really tough to keep off weight. I was inside a lot. 
I ended up eating a lot more than I was supposed to. And I realized, yeah, I gained a few pounds and it was very, very frustrating. So I listened to this podcast and I'm like, wait, this is an excellent way to incorporate a good diet while, you know, also enjoying things day after day. So basically the diet was you don't eat for one entire day. And then the next day you can eat regularly, even a little bit more because you're at a calorie deficit. Right. So I did try that for about three months. And that's called alternate day fasting, which is a little different from intermittent fasting. So as a result of your intermittent fasting, what's changed in your life today? Two things. One is discipline and two, of course, weight loss. I did lose a lot of weight over a year and a half span with the addition of alternate day fasting, a calorie deficit. I lost about 70 pounds. Wow. So I can say that is thanks to the podcast and... You know, it really is life changing. That's incredible. Thanks so much for being here, Andrew. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It is funny, you know, producing this show, you do get a lot of wellness tips and it's improved our wellness, I think. I've learned so much. I I couldn't tell you I ever would have thought that I'd know this much information about health and wellness, but I think we're all better for it. And now with all these content recommendations, which we will be putting as links on the website, and that's eatmovethinkpodcast.com. You know, this is great. It's been basically like a little bit of a brainstorm. For your next read or your next big interest, you know. It's always about learning the next thing, the latest in health and wellness, as we say every single week. So that's what we're trying to help you get onto. Or long overlooked, you know, golden nuggets that are out there that, you know, like the John Kabat-Zinn that have new relevance based on social media or other new developments. So thanks to everybody who contributed to this episode. We really appreciate it. Anybody who wants to arrange a wellness consultation should call MedCan at 416-350-5900. Follow MedCan on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube at MedCanLiveWell. And you can say hello and send us a tip or a suggestion or tell us what changed your wellness by emailing us at info at eatmovethinkpodcast.com. Eat Move Think is produced by Ghost Bureau. I'm executive producer Christopher Shulgin. I'm managing producer Jasmine Ratch. Social media and strategy support is from Chantel Gerton, Andrew Imex, and Emily Bozik. We'll be back soon with a new episode examining the latest in health and wellness. This podcast episode is intended to provide general information about health and wellness only and is not designed or intended to constitute or be used as a substitute for medical advice, treatment, or diagnosis. You should always talk to your MedCan healthcare provider for individual medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment, including your specific health and wellness needs. This podcast is based on the information available at the time of preparation and is only accurate and current as of that date. Source information and recommendations are subject to change based on scientific evidence as it evolves over time. MedCan is not responsible for future changes or updates updates to the information and recommendations and assumes no obligation to update based on future developments. Reference to or mention of specific treatments or therapies does not constitute or imply a recommendation or endorsement. The links provided within the associated document are to assist the reader with any specific information highlighted. Any third-party links are not endorsed by MedCan.